Yo, what's up, guys? We're going to be back right here with the brand new sponsor that I introduced to y'all last week that you guys are going to love. Symbol, the stock market for sports. It allows you to profit off your sports knowledge where you could trade sports teams like stocks. And, you know, every time your team wins, you earn cash. Basically, it is what it sounds like. If somebody is low, you may want to buy into them and wait for them to get high. A team, for example, like the Broncos, which I'm going to show you guys in a second, They've been steadily rising throughout the season, and after their very convincing win against the Cowboys, they're very much on the rise in symbol. You use your sports knowledge, you buy low, sell high, earn cash payouts, and you join the 8,000 plus early adopters who've started to invest in their favorite teams. Go over to www.symbol.com to create a free account, and when you deposit, make sure to use my promo code. My promo cub. My promo code, the hub. I combined code and hub to say cub. Use my promo code, the hub, for a money back guarantee. This isn't just any money back guarantee, though. This is a money back guarantee for up to $500 that you put into the symbol market. So, should you lose out on anything, symbol is guaranteeing that you're going to get that money back as long as it is within the $500 limit. That's a pretty big limit now for you to go in there and basically spend risk free to try and earn some cash on your favorite team whether it's in the nfl nba mlb or even nhl and they have some college football in there as well you got it so symbols offering that money back guarantee to every single person that's looking at this video promo code the hub up to 500 dollars. now real quick let me show you a recap from since last week you've been kind of staring at my portfolio this entire time whereas right now i'm only in the giants and so far i've already made around 14 dollars as you can see, um, you know, I'm up 23.93%. You scroll down, you see what the Giants have been doing. And they even have a little breaking news there related to the NFL. That one specifically about Odell and how that could affect the Rams um, part of the symbol right now. And you can see, the Giants, they've been up. And when you go over to the Sim NFL, like I was talking about, the Broncos have been rising as well. They're up around 10%. The Raiders are down around 14%. You have a breakdown here of each team you can click on it get its own graph and everything so if you're somebody that's saying to yourself for example like i just said the rams right they're up around one percent they were already an expensive commodity though if you think this is a team for example that could go all the way you want to get in right now before they continue to build on their record if you're a believer in the cowboys who are down right now after i lost to the broncos get in on them so on and so forth but guys definitely check it out symbol's been a great sponsor of the channel and let's get to the video Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, Rumble Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another NFL video, kind of Giants related, you know, we're on the bye week and I said to myself, you know, it's the perfect opportunity to take some time and maybe look at something non-Giants related. Um, there hasn't been any major injury news for me to give you guys, you know, the news on. Hasn't been any major dealings, cuts, or signings that's been happening. You know, we've just been kind of going about our bye week and hoping that the coaches are doing the job, the players are showing up and doing their jobs as well. And there was this article that I had my eye on that came out uh, a couple days ago by Daniel Jeremiah. As you can see, the title says, NFL Rookie Rankings at the Halfway Point of the 2021 Season. Now, I've already taken a look at the list. I'm basically going to go back through it, uh, tell you guys my thoughts, and hopefully you will put yours down below. You know, in my opinion, you guys know my rule. You can't really judge a draft pick until about three years down the line, but it's always nice to see where you think they are in their rookie season, whether it's the halfway point, which would kind of be right now or sometime last week or, you know, at the end of their rookie season. And I will say we do have two Giants rookies on the list. It's always nice to have more than one of them on there i think this is a list of 25 by the way so let's go ahead go on down and see what's up they got at first place micah parsons and i know some giants fans really wanted micah parsons a lot of viewers and callers of the show really wanted micah parsons as well he was of course taken i think right before us right he was what, what was that pick eight or nine or ten one of those because we were sitting at 11 we traded down with chicago the Eagles were at 10. I think the Cowboys were at 9. So he did go before us. But yeah, as, as it says here, Daniel, he's only given kind of like one-liners for like not necessarily explanation, but just kind of a one line on each player that he has on the list. And the single line he has here simply states, Parsons should be in the mix for defensive player of the year. He's been that dominant on a weekly basis. And he's shown to be also very versatile. 
They use him in multiple, multiple positions. I believe they, they use him at edge rusher mostly now. But he's a name that you've heard of as soon as they drafted him and throughout the preseason because of hard knocks and throughout the regular season making a name for himself, really showing that he's the best defensive player out of this draft. In my opinion and then at number two you guys can already see it but i'm gonna scroll down so you can read the full thing you got jamar chase the wide receiver out of lsu what was almost everybody's consensus number one wide receiver a lot of people had doubts about him after he was dropping balls in the preseason um as you guys know or some of you know i actually have a bet going on with fisk vegas shout out to fisk um where i said uh jamar chase was going to be better than odell and justin jefferson in his rookie year and at first that bet seemed kind of stupid but now Jamar is not only back on track to what some of, us, some of us expected him to be at the NFL level, but in some cases, he's exceeding that. The man is, you know what, I could pull it up right now on my phone. Let's pull up his stats, right? But he's on pace to, like, break some rookie records, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Jamar Chase stats. Right now on the season, he already has 835 yards. Oh, oh my God. And that's just over... Have they played 10 or 9 games real quick? They've only played 9 games. Let's do some quick maths real quick. So, 835 divided by 9. And then times 17. Yeah, he's on pace for 1,577 yards. I. Uh, that's a lot. Man is certainly doing his thing. And number three, you got Rashawn Slater, a player that was on the board when the Giants traded down. A player, another one of those players that the Giants really, or the Giants fans really, really wanted, especially for our offensive line. And we're seeing how our offensive line is struggling right now. We're seeing that we have depth, depth problems. And I guarantee if we had Rashawn Slater, yeah, he'd definitely be starting ahead of Matt Pert and Nate Solder. No question about it. And that would have been my god talk about a an amazing tackle duo for the future but he's been doing his thing with la he's as the um one line says playing at a pro bowl level dominant in pass protection and creates tons of movement in the run game that would have been a strong strong tackle duo but he's doing great for the Chargers right now i'm um, happy that he's showing up and showing out then you got kyle pitts at number four a guy that kind of had a slow start to his rookie year uh i'll put that more on the falcons than kyle pitts himself but where was he taken? Was he actually taken at, uh, the, the Falcons were picking fourth, right? And now he's ranked fourth on the list here. Man, I really wish he included where the um, players were drafted because that would help so much in terms of seeing, you know, just how much they might have progressed and where the NFL thought they were. Let me see. Kyle Pitts draft pick. Yeah, he was taken fourth and he's ranked fourth, right? That's kind of crazy. But this was somebody, you remember all the hype that was around Kyle Pitts during draft time? There was there were even Giants fans that wanted this guy as well, even though tight end wasn't necessarily a need. But that was the argument for Pitts, right? It's not that he's a tight end. It's just that very simply put, he's a weapon. You know, he's a mismatch, as Jeremiah says here every single game right now. And he's not the uh, Evan Ingram type of weapon. He's a completely different player. And it shows right now for uh, the Falcons, who are obviously missing Julio Jones. Uh, they need a weapon. And then you got Mac Jones at number five. And you guys, I, you guys know that I was a big Mac Jones fan during the draft process. At first, it kind of started out as a joke. I will not lie to you. It kind of started out as a joke with the whole Mac Jones thing, you know, shout out Mike Jones. Um, but then afterwards, I actually started to really like the guy the more and more I watched him play. And he's, yeah, he's, I wouldn't say he's the fifth best player out of this draft class. I believe this is the first quarterback on the list. In terms of consistency, I get why he's put there. Because you look at the other rookie QBs, Trevor hasn't exactly lived up to expectations. And that's not even all on him. We understand that. You know, the coaching situation and the roster over there is really, really bad. Uh, Justin Fields hasn't been too consistent once again. But that's, you know, like his offensive line. He, you know, Matt Nagy doesn't look the same and stuff like that. Um, Trey Lance, I don't even know if he's even gotten to see the field that much. And then Zach Wilson, well... <laughs> There's not much to say on Zach Wilson when his backup is playing him out. So I guess Mac Jones does kind of make sense as the first quarterback we see on this list. But at fifth on the list for all rookies, I'm not sure about that. Then you got Devontae Williams, the Denver running back, ahead of Najee Harris, who's down there at number eight. So you got Javante Williams, Creed Humphrey, Najee Harris. I'd probably put Najee above Javante, but I guess a lot of this has to do with the fact that the running game is a big part 
of the Broncos offense and the Broncos are doing extremely well right now so maybe that's part of the reason they put Javante up there and then Creed another offensive lineman that was surprisingly um surprisingly I I, I think Creed went in the second round right I I I think he went in the second round he was somebody I thought that was gonna go in the first round because of how good he was at what he does but you know obviously see him here at seventh he's doing his thing and then Najee at eight I agree with that then you got Adafe Owe aka Jason Owe who's been a force for the Baltimore Ravens defense he's ranked kind of high you got Owe then Smith then Lawrence um, I don't know if I'd put Jason o or Adafe Owe this high. I'm, it's it's going to have to break that habit of saying Jason Owe. I don't know if I'd put Owe this high. Has he been that impactful for the Ravens? Um, Ravens fans, let me know. Or Giants fans that observe the Ravens, let me know. I'd probably put him below these next three guys, though. Because you got Devontae Smith, Trevor Lawrence, and Patrick Sertan. I'd probably put Jason... I, I'll just say Owe. I'd probably put Owe at, like, number 12 or something instead of number 9. Because I do think those other three guys are currently better than him. And then you got Elijah Mitchell, a running back that I really wanted for the Giants to take in the sixth round. And that's exactly where he went to the 49ers. And he's he's the 49ers best running back. And he's doing his thing over there. He's running extremely well. This was a guy that I thought would just be a really good backup and a really good number two running back that could come in and spell Saquon occasionally. And, and here he is being a number one <laughs> and executing fairly well at it then you got nick bolton another chiefs pick so we see two players for the chiefs on here so far jalen waddle christian barrymore and then trey smith make that three picks for the chiefs they had a really good draft man creed humphrey nick bolton trey smith especially with trey smith and creed humphrey and uh smith was an offensive lineman that went in the sixth round and we could question all day every day what the giants were doing in the late rounds by not taking an offensive lineman man nick bolton one of the best linebackers in the class. I believe, um, other than... Par okay, yeah, he's the second linebacker we're seeing on this list because Parsons has been the only one so far. Yeah, the, and then Jalen Waddle has... Hasn't Waddle dealt with a bit of injury a little bit? Um, I believe he's dealt with a little bit of injury. We'll see what that is. And Christian Barrymore to the Patriots has been an absolute cheat code, man. That man is a beast. Then you got Jeremiah Owusu, Koromora, Elijah Vera Tucker, Justin Fields. We're getting into the 20s now. JOK, he's also missed a couple of games due to injury. And I really, I want to know how he's factoring that in as we're getting towards the end of the list and we're getting to our Giants players. So, you know, kind of spoiled. Yes, we are towards the bottom. But you also think about, like, for example, our first round pick has missed. Man, how many games has he missed? He's been out. He's been in games, but he hasn't been used because of his injuries. And you guys know what I mean about that. So he's missed playing time technically due to his injury right and then um in our second round pick in aziz he's been there he's been healthy and you know knock on wood hopefully he stays there for the rest of the career there i wonder how uh daniel jeremiah is ranking all of that into here but he says jok has been higher on the list if he didn't miss games he's a swiss army knife capable of playing about any position in the back seven i'd probably put him at 20 and, ha and i'd have avt and justin fields above him avt performing kind of as you expected and in fact fields i'd probably have higher than 20 myself maybe i put a little bit too much um weight on the quarterback position but that's a big gap between trevor lawrence and justin fields there i think at times during the season justin fields has even looked better than trevor lawrence but that's just me and then you get to now you finally see a couple giants players here you have nate hobbs the corner for vegas uh, michael carter the running back for the jets Kadarius tony our guy for the giants and aziz back to back we have our two guys there this is the giants fan speaking in me i would have aziz ojalari higher on this list i would Kadarius tony maybe i'd put him higher but not too much because i'm factoring in the injury right? i'm actually factoring how much he's played during the regular season and it hasn't been that much when we've seen him though we've seen that he's a game changer he's explosive there's barely any defense that could stop him he literally gets the offense churning by himself however he hasn't played that much in the first place so i could actually kind of understand and respect this ranking a little bit aziz not so much he leads all rookies in sacks right now with five and a half like i was wondering why jason Owe is so high and stats are not everything I continuously say that right but when you look at the the, the the discrepancy between what Aziz has done so far in his rookie year and Jason Owe on the stat sheet it makes you wonder that's why I was asking has he been more impactful somehow 
whether that means bringing down Owe or or putting Aziz higher, I don't know. But I think Aziz Ojolari should be higher on this list. As I got, I was picked 50th overall in the NFL draft and once again leads all NFL rookies in sacks. And he's been a good edge rusher for us. Yes, he has his space to improve. But I think he should definitely be higher than basically the second to last dude on this list. Because the last guy here is Pat Fryermu, who's been a good uh, tight end for the Steelers right now. But I would definitely put Aziz higher. I'd probably put Kadarius higher. I would put Justin Fields higher. I'd bring down JOK. I'd put Barrymore a little bit higher. Um, and I'd probably bring down uh, Oway a little bit. I'd uh, probably switch the places of Najee Harris and Javante Williams. And other than that, like the list is respectable. But you guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Who would you move around? Do you agree with me? Or am I speaking just purely off of Giants blinders right now um, with my Aziz and uh, Kadarius Tony ranking? But that's it for now. Put your thoughts down below. That would be a fun little video to do on the bye week. And I'm out.